My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well on this very wet morning. The time right now is 9.03. And it is a wet mess. I had enough time to set up this tent and that was about it. I set this up it started raining. My plan was to set this up and go gather some firewood, but I don't think that's possible. Not today. Now that it's raining, I don't think it's going to stop until tomorrow. When it comes to the setup, that was a little bit of a mess, and that's more because I was rushing because of the rain. I started to set up right towards the end. It started raining, so everything kind of got a little bit sloppy. <laughs> that's okay though, that's how it goes sometimes. Talking about the forecast, I will go ahead and read it to you. This is what we're in for today, ladies and gentlemen. So there is a flash flood watch in effect until 11 o'clock tonight. Periods of rain can be expected throughout the day, heavy rain at times. If thunderstorms develop, rain may be excessive, lead to flooding. Average rain amounts one to three inches. If there's thunderstorms, three to five inches. Oh yeah. Perfect, I call it perfect. <laughs> I have been waiting for like a really good rain event, something that lasts like all day long. This is it. It is going to rain all day, all night, into tomorrow. We can use it. It's pretty dry, actually. Even with all of the rain that we get, still dry. Normally in this area, when summer's coming to an end, it's a little bit dry. As we go into fall, that's when things get really, really wet. Oftentimes, we have the tropical storms, the hurricanes come through, plus just the typical mountain rain. I'm so thankful to be here. I love being out in the rain. I love Lone Wolf Mountain. And I'm so glad that you all joined me for this trip. I want to take a second and thank you all so much. So in a previous episode or two, I mentioned that I was having some back pain. I'm not going to go over that again and why that was, but I had so many people reaching out to me with ideas. Some people send in different like medicines and whatnot. I appreciate you all so much. That means so much to me. And uh, everyone, I'm feeling great. The only thing that's bothering me right now is a lack of coffee. So let's change that. 
<laughs> this is the Four Winds butane stove. The setup process of this is very convoluted, as you saw there. It's like each one of these legs has a certain order, otherwise you have to like flip them back and then flip them forward. It's, uh, it's a little bit different. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. So for this leg to go up, this leg has to move back. So you have to do that, then that, then this. The thing is, there's no way to tell what the order is for the legs, and that includes the feet for this stove as well. A few weeks back I was testing out a Four Winds butane stove, one of the big boys. I didn't like that too much, it was way too expensive. The company also sent me this smaller butane stove. I actually like it quite a bit more. It's very powerful, it's easy to adjust, it simmers really well, the legs are a little bit funky in the way that it sets up and also the pot supports, but all in all, I like this one. More than the stove, I'm sure you're curious about this tent. This thing is massive. This comes from a Japanese company called DOD Outdoors. You might be thinking Department of Defense, but that's not it. Go ahead and take a guess what DOD stands for. Don't do a search because you're not going to find anything. Comment down below, you can guess. Cheers, folks, cheers. Cheers to the rain. When it comes to this tent, it's interesting. You can think of it as like a big shell. With the Japanese culture, oftentimes they set up with big tents like this and they'll put down like rugs and they'll have multiple tables, TVs and stuff. It's really, really interesting. If you haven't watched any like uh, Japanese camping videos, you definitely should because they're quite good. <laughs> One interesting thing though, man they can eat. They will sit down and they will eat for like two hours straight. It's like meal after meal after meal. I've asked some of my Japanese viewers about this and they said in the Japanese culture when you go camping it's a total body refresh sort of thing. So it's like they go out, they unwind, it's all about relaxing luxury's okay and that's when they eat these big meals they really kick back and enjoy themselves and i think that's really neat as you've seen with most of my videos i tend to rough it more times than not not everybody wants to go backpacking not everybody can go backpacking but most people can go car camping truck camping just like this i did some looking around and since i was inspired by the japanese i picked up this japanese tent now dod outdoors is available in the united states as far as the pros go so far with this tent, the quality seems to be excellent. Top-notch materials. Overall, the setup process is easy. The cons would be price. This is an expensive tent. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's going to be expensive. Another con is that the instructions were in Japanese. Once I had the tent set up, I did some searching and I did find some English instructions on their website. 
but it would have been nice to have those instructions with the tent itself. Another con for this tent would be the materials themselves. It is a sill nylon of some sort, and it definitely stretches. But luckily, you have plenty of tie-off points. You can make quick adjustments. The tent comes with four poles, but as you see here, I've added quite a few more. I really wanted to pull this out, stretch it out, and that's because we're getting so much rain today. And also, my setup was a little bit sloppy because I was rushed. I gotta be honest, a little bit of it's my fault. So. During lunch, folks, I have a story to tell you. I received a nasty email from a woman who was trying to email a different YouTuber, and what she had to say to this person was uh, pretty funny, pretty funny. People could be so nasty, I tell you what. Oh, man. Well, it looks like the heavy rain has returned. Sounds about right. I guess I'll go ahead and make lunch. Why not? For lunch today, I'm having blueberry and vanilla oatmeal. This is actually my breakfast, but I'm just now getting around to eating it. I've been busy filming this video. Before I eat, I will read you this email that I received. Now again, this was meant for someone else. I assume a bushcraft channel, a channel that builds things and also hunts because, well, you'll see. It's actually amazing that it starts off with like, hey, Anyway, by the way, this woman's name is Sandra, so it says, Hey, you've decided to live like a hobo. Why do you have internet access? Why do you kill innocent animals? You've decided to live like a bum, not the animals. Bushcraft is so annoying and useless. Maybe in 10,000 years, dot dot dot, zero, so 100,000 years. Stop killing innocent animals. Stop using the internet. <laughs> So that's a message from Sandra for someone. I wrote this person back and I was like, okay, obviously you have the wrong channel. I'm not sure exactly how you mixed this up, but whatever. I went on to say like, I'm very interested to know who on earth are you talking about? Who is this for? Maybe you all can answer that question. What channel is this woman talking about? Obviously they're building something. They're living in a shelter of some sort that they built. They hunt, I don't know. You all tell me in the comment section down below. <laughs> Sandra, calm down. Something that people have to realize is this. When it comes to a YouTube channel, people watch the videos and they form a connection with that individual. And so that they feel like they know that person. But on the other end, the YouTuber doesn't know the viewer, right? They never engage, they don't see that person. So like, when a woman like Sandra sends a nasty email to another YouTube channel, that YouTuber doesn't care at all. It doesn't upset them. They don't care because it's not someone they know. It's not like a friend or a family member was putting them down or criticizing them. It's a complete stranger. Anyways, I thought that was incredibly funny. I would say over the last 10 years that I've been doing YouTube, I've received maybe seven or eight nasty emails in total. 
and it's always over something like really strange. A few years ago, I received an email from a guy who was talking about Bigfoot. In some adventure, I mentioned that Bigfoot may or may not exist. I wasn't sure. Well, that upset this guy, right? Because he's a huge Bigfoot fan. He's obsessed with it, whatever. So he was writing in to tell me that I'm the world's biggest dumb ass because I don't believe in Bigfoot. Which, Bigfoot may exist. I don't know. But I have yet to see any real evidence. Anyway. This individual went on to send me tons and tons of pictures and videos that he says that he captured a Bigfoot. I'm pretty sure it's from a television show, and I don't remember what it was. But anyway, like it was the worst looking thing I've ever seen. It was so bizarre, and this guy was so intent on it. He believed it so much that he wanted to write, rip into me. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and try this. Mm -hmm. Oatmeal goodness. I don't know if you all can hear me right now, but it is absolutely pouring and it has been for the last hour. There is a river of water coming down this mountain. I love rain, but I hope it knocks this off rather soon. This type of rain could cause a lot of problems. before about the fact that there's no such thing as a perfect campsite. This pretty much proves it. Here at Lone Wolf Mountain, this is about the flattest area there is, but yet there's a little bit of a slope to it going this way. So now it's raining so hard, all of that water is moving down. So basically what I have here is a swimming pool. <laughs> What do you do? Nothing.
Okay, maybe you all can hear me now. I'm not sure if you could hear anything I said previously. It was raining so hard. That rain event right there dropped numerous inches. It was incredibly heavy. Water was just basically coming off of the mountain, kind of turning my entire campsite into a pool. It's soupy, but all in all, it's not too bad. Luckily, where I have my cot set up, it's pretty dry. You know, everyone, I don't think I did a good job of explaining what this tent is for or why this tent exists. So again, this tent is just like a big shell. There is no inner, there's no bug protection. I mean, there is some actually. Here on these walls that I have vestibuled out, there is mesh. So if you want to keep the bugs out, you certainly can, but there's no floor or anything like that. Anyways. The purpose of these tents is so that you have a big dry area. And oftentimes in the Japanese camping culture, they will set up these big tents and then set up smaller tents on the inside. So that you may have like a two person bug inner tent on this side, you might have a one person over here, uh, some tables, some chairs, a cooking area, and so on. It's pretty interesting actually. I was thinking earlier, I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything quite like this tent before. It's very, very unique. At the time of filming this video, it's at the beginning of September, and already the leaves have begun changing colors, they're falling already. In fact, they began changing colors at the beginning of August here. <laughs> Fall is coming on strong, and I can't wait. Already the growth stage has slowed. I'm having to mow here once every two weeks, three weeks. It's funny. The leaves will begin changing colors here long before they will even like in Colorado at high elevation. I'm not entirely sure why exactly, but they do. As for the day, folks, it's pretty low-key. I've done a whole lot of just sitting around, watching the rain, listening to the rain, and that's about it. It's been nice. 
I think that's my favorite thing about rain camping. For the most part, you're stuck inside of the tent, you're just kicking back, you're relaxing, you're thinking. There's not many times in your life where you can do such a thing, where you can have just like peace and quiet. Or at least that's true for myself. When I come out for these rain trips, yeah, it's a ton of work to film, but at the same time, it's good for this, it's good for that too. <laughs> the rain has finally ceased. It's still misting out there, but it's not raining. The thing is, we're not done yet. There's more rain on the way. This was just the first wave. So, all in all, this has been a ton of fun, but, but, it has been very, very sloppy. My entire campsite, with the exception of where my cot's at, is just a mud pit. Before I make dinner, I want to talk about this one piece of kit real quick. Actually, two pieces of kit. So first off is the table here. This is the One Tigress table. This is the brand new One Tigress folding worktop table. They just brought this back to the market. It's back, everyone. You all have been asking about this table for many years. Roughly two years ago, the company discontinued this. Luckily, they just brought out a new version. So if you want one, get one. What I want to talk about next is the canvas tarp that I have on the ground underneath my cot. I have sprayed this with permethrin. This is a great way to kill ticks, spiders, ants, insects, mosquitoes, whatever. If you're going to sleep under a tarp or maybe in a tent that doesn't offer bug protection, this is a great way to stay safe. It will keep all of the bugs away. All that you have to worry about is your exposed skin. That's a little tip for you all if you want to sleep in a big tent like this or underneath a tarp. Folks, all right, it is dinner time, and I have made one heck of a meal here. So we have some Hawaiian chicken, barbecue sauce. There's um, some pineapple in this. We have some rice, yeah. And as you can hear, it's raining. That was a nice break though. It lasted maybe an hour, something like that. Here we go, folks, here we go. <laughs> I'm just going to turn the camera off now so I can say, mmm, good. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. My plan for tonight is to sleep with both of these vestibules open. I'm not going to worry about the bug mesh because we don't have any bugs here, really. Let me clarify. We don't have any flying insects that are of any real nuisance. Mosquitoes aren't a problem here, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to sleep with everything open. Enjoy the air. And trust me, on a night like tonight, 
you will want some air. It is so humid. It's not all that hot. It's only about 68 degrees. But the humidity is 100%. The air is thick, sticky. <laughs> it's awful. Talking about sleeping with this tent open. If you're not accustomed to like sleeping underneath a tarp or with a tent that's open, it can feel really, really strange. It takes a while before you really begin to feel like secure with everything open, all of the air, nothing to separate you from the outside world. For this episode, I was hoping to be able to split some firewood so we can have a fire tonight. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Everything here is just sopping wet. In the future, I want to talk with you all about how to use a hatchet because I was reading some of the comments in one of my previous adventures where I was splitting some wood with a long-handled hatchet. Apparently, there's a handful of viewers who have been watching other YouTube channels and they picked up on something that someone said. Something along the lines of like, you need to be on your knees when you're using a hatchet, and that's not true. In some cases, it is. But again, we're talking about a long-handled hatchet, which is like a small ax. With a long-handled hatchet, you can absolutely stand up and you can use it just as you would an ax. The key, folks, the absolute key, is control over the blade and the power of the swing. More than anything, you're going to allow gravity and the weight of the head to hit the wood. You're not going to use your power, you're not going to swing that super hard, and that's how you stay safe. I'll explain all of this in a future episode, but I saw some of those incorrect comments and there was enough of them that we'll have to talk about it in the future. And that's just for education's sake, knowledge's sake. So if you go out with a hatchet, you can use it properly. Now, if you're using a short-handled hatchet, it is best to be on your knees. That way, the deflection point is straight into the ground. It's not into your leg. everyone good morning good morning I think it's possibly the wettest morning of all time it's never been wetter than this <laughs> oh yeah cowboy coffee for the win perfect
years. Ah, it's a good way to wake up. As for the time, it is now 7.45, got up around 7. It is incredibly wet, everyone. You all can see the fog behind me here. That's not a good sign. What that tells me is that the moisture on the ground is cold, but the air temperature is going up. So it's gonna be foggy this morning, then it's gonna get hot and muggy. When the sun begins to burn off all of this moisture, it is going to get so humid. <laughs> it's going to get even wetter, if that's possible. I slept great last night. Out here on the cot, underneath the blanket. I used the uh, whoopee blanket. It was perfect. Just peaceful and quiet. Didn't hear anything. I went to bed around 10 o'clock last night. Slept all the way through the night. Didn't wake up one time. It rained. Well, it drizzled more than anything all night. As I'm sitting here having coffee, listening to the crows, I'm debating, do I want to make breakfast or not? There's a part of me that says, like, be lazy, don't make breakfast. I'm sure there's something in that bag over there that I can eat and I don't have to cook anything. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do. I just don't feel it this morning. I don't feel like making a bigger mess than I've already made. Yeah, okay. I have some eggs in the truck in the refrigerator. Okay, so for breakfast, I'm going to have Greek yogurt blueberry sandwich. That sounds incredibly good. Better than eggs. Not really. I have a uh, peanut butter and banana and oats Bob's bar. I have no idea who Bob is. Ah, this will tie it together. Oatmeal. Ah, this will tie it together. Some applesauce. <laughs> there you go, that's my breakfast. Let's try this sandwich thing. Some sort of sandwich and coffee. Sounds pretty good. Smells good. It's not quite as sweet as I was expecting. If you notice in my videos, anytime that I'm eating a bar or something, I usually bite on the side instead of the front. I'm not sure if you've picked up on that or not, but there's a reason for that. Oftentimes, inside of my food bag, I have bars and snacks and whatever. Sometimes, those things get to be so old that they're like cement blocks. So, <laughs> I always start with a side bite, just in case like it's like super, super hard. That's why. <laughs> Anyways, everyone, that was a fantastic trip. Thank you all so much for joining me for it. Make sure to comment down below and share your thoughts. What do you all think about this gigantic DOD tent? Also, tell me what DOD stands for. I really like this tent. It is massive. I was thinking about this yesterday. These vestibules are so big that I could have backed the truck right up to either one of them. That's pretty awesome. So, what I like. The quality is good. The setup is fairly easy. This is waterproof. You do have bug mesh, so you can zip this up, keep out the mosquitoes. There is no floor in this tent, so you have to keep that in mind. Bugs can get in that way. There's a lot of vents. There's a lot of unique features to this that I didn't show. For an example, there's vents in the corners. There's these big mesh panels on the sides. Over here at the top, we have a hanging line. What I don't like about this tent are the materials. They're definitely very good, very strong. They're also extremely stretchy. And that takes me back to the setup. I thought I did a fairly good job setting this up, but yet I had these pockets where water is pulling, so I had to use more poles. With this tent, it's gonna take some practice setting this up and getting it right. Until then, I'm glad that I have all of these elephant poles. They have helped a lot. I'll just have to get this out for another trip and see if I could set it up and do a better job. For this adventure, folks, I'm going to begin breaking everything down. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This was, without a doubt, one of the wettest trips. We received about four inches of rain yesterday. Everything here is sopping wet. It's so muddy. With these rain trips, I love them. The worst part is that you have to dry all of this stuff out. For an example, this tent, it is going to be a pain to dry this because it's massive. It's massive. With that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me for this trip. It is appreciated. Hit the like button before you go. It does help the channel. Everybody, take care. Be well. I will see you on the next one. Who knows? Maybe with the next trip, it won't rain. We'll see.
<laughs> Take care, everybody. Strength and honor. Can't help what I'm feeling